committee meeting to order. The first item we have is assignment for request for council action. We have several for the finance, 22262, amend ordinance 213-22 fitness room, 22263, um, leasing contract with Lafayette Township, 22264 expenditure, jet of a fuel, 22265 increase PO, 22355 Mason Custom Building Service, 22266 increase PO, 22525 Water Haverfield Law, 22267 Budget Amendments, 22268 Advanced Request West Smith Phase 4, 22269 Expenditure Software Solutions Finance, 22270 Job Creation Grant Agreement, Agrati Inc., 22271 2023 Tax Advances. 22272 dedication plat for public alley. 22273 amend code 943.02 general regulation cemetery. 22274 contract with Enviro Science Rocky River Stabilization Project ARPA. 22275 amend salaries and benefits code 3105 and 3107 various parks and MCRC. 22276 amends civil service rules regarding lateral entry of patrol officers. 22277 expenditure over 15,000 railroad liability insurance. 22278 accept donation parcel 02803 124 from West Creek Conservancy. 22275 expenditure over 15,000 technology engineering IT services. First item we have is 22262 amend ordinance 213 proposal with Fannie and Howe fitness room. Mr. Worley, this must be you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, last council meeting, we approved ordinance 213-22 to enter into contract with Fanning and Howie for the fitness room addition uh, design services. And uh, Kathy and I discovered that uh, the dollar amount for that contract was left out, so therefore we couldn't uh, generate the purchase order. Uh, the dollar amount is $48,000. Any questions? Mr. President, uh, Mr. I'm going to abstain on this one since it involves my employer. Okay. Move to approve with the emergency clause. <clears throat> Second, including the emergency clause. Any further discussion with the emergency clause? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 22. Uh, abstain. Oh, oh, any abstentions? Sorry. Abstain. We have one abstention. Sorry for that. You said it, I forgot. Uh, 22263, policing contract with Lafayette Township. Uh, Chief Kenny, you spoke about this last meeting. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. This is our contract with Lafayette Township. Uh, our current one is expiring. Our last one was a four-year contract. It was a pass-through, and it varied between the upper 200,000s to the lower 300,000s of revenue per year. This contract will be essentially the same with the exception it will not be a pass-through. It is at a set level of 400,000. This will be a five-year contract. The emergency clause is requested because the current contract expires December. 31st. And this is going to council this evening also. That's why he brought it up last meeting. So if you had any questions on anything, anybody have any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Rose? Uh, yeah, Chief, does this have any um, inflation resets or is this $400,000 for the life of the contract each year? <coughs> yes, sir, that's correct. It's 400000 okay. no for five inflation. years. All right, thank year. you. I move to approve with the emergency clause. Second, including the emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And I assume that, I apologize, I assume the law director, this is the same contract, the law directors approved this form and all that. Yes, sir, Mr. Huber approved it, as, okay. as did their counsel. Okay, thank you. Uh, 22264 expenditure for jet A fuel is uh, Mayor, or, or Lori. Thank you, Mr. President. This um, is for 2023 jet fuel class costs um, for the airport. Um, the emergency clause is requested in case we have to purchase fuel in early in January, so we can go ahead and make that purchase. Any questions? Oh. Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second, including the emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 22265 increase PO, 221355 Mason Custom Builders. Mr. Piccoli. Thank you, Mr. President. So we were grateful to get this project done. Uh, folks were really patient during the uh, construction project portion. Um, the parts that typically um, were needed for the transition of the wall carrier plate to the existing hub, which is a toilet fixture um, behind the wall embedded in concrete, was not available. We ended up uh, talking, the contractor ended up talking with uh, Swingle, who was able to find some parts out of uh, Cincinnati. Um, there was a little delay in obtaining those, um, and the cost for those were 3000 
$207, and then we added uh, lighting to match the lighting that's in the uh, rotunda. We had original PO for $24,000. Um, we're asking for the uh, additional $3,827 um, so we can get the contractor paid with the emergency clause. Any further questions? Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second, including the emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Opposed, you. motion carries. 22266, increased PO 22525, Walter Haverfield. Mr. Hubert. Is this you? This is a PO for finishing out the rest of the year for Walter and Haverfield, specifically having to do with some of the work Attorney Hunt did on um, civil service creation of a uh, transfer mechanism for officers coming from other departments. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 22267. We have budget amendments. We have 22043 various. Lori? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. These are mostly to clear up uh, year-end balances. There's a couple adjustments for um, an advance for the Smith Road project. And, yeah, the rest are year-end. All right. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed, motion carries. And we have 20-22-044 ED advertising. And this is just advertising for the Economic Development Department. This one is a donation that um, for from the Chamber of Commerce or for the visitor guides for the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Questions? Move to approve. Oh. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Just for just for clarification, that five hundred dollars was from the chamber to the city because they share the cost of the visitor's guide with us. Okay. Thank you. Twenty two two sixty eight advance request. Lori? Thank you, Mr. President. This is the advance request. We're going from the street stormwater fund to the 386 fund for the West Smith Road project. And we received a grant to pay uh, $2,046,500. And then we will repay the advance once we receive the funds when the project is complete. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 22269 expenditure for 15,000 software solutions for the finance department. Where are you in again? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. This is for our annual service uh, support costs for our financial software. And um, last year, our fees were 46,175, so it's gone up about $6,000 for this year. Ooh. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries 22270 job creation grant agreement for Grady Inc. Mrs. Marshall. Thank you, Mr. President. This request is for council to authorize the mayor to enter into a job creation grant agreement with Grady for the purpose of expanding their business in the city of Medina. This project will allow them to construct a state of the art tech center facility located at the 941 uh, Lake Road. Uh, facility and then additionally they will renovate their facility at 955 Lake Road to add space for a training center. They will have an estimated investment of $12,875,000 in this project and they have committed to creating 40 new full-time positions with new payroll of $3,100,000 to the City of Medina over a three-year period with their hiring starting in uh, mid-2023 through 2025. This agreement will provide Agrati with a grant up to 40% of new payroll taxes to the city for a six-year term. The city is in competition for this project with their Park Force Illinois facility, so we're also working with the State of Ohio, uh, Jobs Ohio, and County Economic Development on this project. The Business Development Committee met with the company on December 2nd to review and discuss the project. They voted to uh, move this to council for consideration. So we respectfully request approval of the job creation grant agreement with Agrati. Uh, the agreement has been reviewed by the law director and has been approved by him. And then as a reminder to council and public, 
the job creation grants are funded from non-income tax generated revenues. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick question. We, we went through this. I mean, they haven't made a determination yet on what projects. Should we make this uh, contingent upon um, approval? That way we don't have to do a repeal if it doesn't go through. Would that be easier? Yeah, because we had that issue with right. Expert Crane, and I asked them to send a letter, and the fellow responded back to me today on that one, so we'll probably rescind the one for Expert Crane. So so we just have a contingent upon acceptance, I guess. We can make it, uh, mm -hmm. we approve it contingent upon the applicant accepting the, uh, the grant, because they have to sign it also. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's correct. The company also has to sign the agreement, mm -hmm. as well as the mayor. Let's do it that way. Okay, I'll make a motion. Um, to move forward with the job creation grant contingent on the company accepting the grant. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 22, 271, 2023 20, tax advances. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. This is to authorize the county to advance us our property taxes for 2023. Emergency clause is requested because this is due back to the county by January 13th. Questions? Move to approve with the emergency clause. Second, including the emergency clause. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 2022-272 dedication plan for public alley. Mr. Patton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is asking council to approve and authorize the mayor to sign the plat that will create a public alley running from State Route 18 uh, north approximately 160 feet and it'll be 35 foot wide. Uh, it basically runs along <coughs> Sully's. And this was approved by the Planning Commission at their October 13th meeting. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. <clears throat> Mr. President. Mayor. So if council's not aware, what this is doing is the connecting drive then from West Liberty Street to the parking deck. Um, right now we're just using the parking lot. Uh, but if this uh, Rose project comes to fruition and we're getting closer and closer to that, uh, then we need to have this in place so that we still have access to the parking deck. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I, Mr. President. Mr. Rose. Um, is this going to abut up against the um, outdoor dining that Sully's has there? It will be very close, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I would note this is not, a, we've got four or five of these are in the downtown area, these public alleys, so it's not unusual. Okay. Thank you. And just as a reminder, Paul, uh, a portion of the Sully's patio is actually on city property already. So it's not like we're encroaching on them. They're, they're already encroaching on us through a revocable use permit. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 22-273 amended code section 943.02 general regulations for the cemetery. Mr. Worley. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, not too long ago, it, uh, a concern was brought to our attention regarding uh, the ponds at Spring Grove Cemetery. Um, the mayor and I had a conversation with our insurance company uh, regarding those concerns, and uh, they had recommended that we put signs up prohibiting swimming in the ponds uh, at Spring Grove Cemetery. Uh, we talked about this with uh, the Cemetery Commission on December 6th. Uh, and they uh, approve the language as well as Mr. Huber uh, that uh, we will add a uh, section H to our general regulations prohibiting swimming, ice skating, or fishing in ponds or pools of water. Hmm. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. 22-274, contract with Envirus Science Rocky River Stabilization Project, Air PA funds. Jason? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this project was identified on our original ARPA funds uh, project list uh, quite some time ago. It's taken a little while to get to this point that we're at right now. Um, Pat and I uh, met with two different uh, consultants uh, out at Huffman Cunningham Park. And for those of you that don't know, I included the maps in here, uh, but the west branch of the Rocky River runs through there and it takes a essentially a 90 degree turn uh, right adjacent to our soccer fields, the Cunningham fields. Um, and over the last 10 years, we've lost about 30 feet of riverbank and it has approached the access drive that goes to the back of the park 
uh, and it's so close to the point where we had to close off that roadway this year. Uh, so this project uh, will uh, address that um, and basically uh, gain back some of the property that we've lost uh, through construction. Um, and this uh, consultant uh, that we've selected here um, is very well adversed in this type of work. Um, they are uh, going to design it for us and then provide an engineer's estimate. Um, and then uh, it's our anticipation that the engineering department will uh, bid it. Construction budget for the project is approximately $200,000, excluding uh, the estimated costs that are here. Uh, we will uh, be able to permit this project through the U.S. Army, Army Corps of Engineers through a nationwide 13 uh, application uh, because we'll be placing fill uh, below the ordinary high water mark. Um, so this is very important uh, so that we can continue to use those uh, fields over there. Uh, as well as uh, address the erosion uh, problem as we've con continued to see large uh, rain events um, and then as we uh, continue to develop, uh, the problem's only been getting worse. Um, so we're uh, hopeful that we can enter into contract with them and uh, move forward with the project in the near future. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unopposed. Motion carries. 22-275. Amend salaries and benefits. 3105-3107. Job descriptions and department reorganization. Mr. Worley. I'm going to I'm going to do the best I can to make sense out of this for you. I know there's a lot to digest on this r request. Uh, so, <coughs> a little bit of background. So, uh, pre-COVID, um, the former uh, rec director uh, retired. Um, and we came up with a temporary solution to uh, operate with minimal, uh, minimize our expenses uh, because the rec center was um, seeing decrease uh, in membership and attendance. So uh, fast forward to where we are today, things are looking a lot better. Uh, membership's coming back. Um, so uh, we're, we're looking to uh, make this uh, change more uh, permanent uh, for the future. So uh, with that, the first request uh, on the list here is to abolish the Recreation Center Director position and the Rec Center Finance Assistant position. And what our plan is, is obviously myself will continue working uh, with the staff at the Rec Center. Um, we have blended the two job descriptions that we're requesting to abolish with myself and the Rec Center Superintendent, which is Christy Motes. Um, we've combined the finance assistant responsibilities, the rec director responsibilities with the two of us. Um, and then the uh, third job description is for the office administrator. Uh, our, our operations have changed pretty drastically over the two year, last two years. We've moved a lot of our rentals, our memberships, and our programs uh, registration to online. So it's enabled us to do more uh, with the same amount of staffing. So we've updated the office administ administrator job description to reflect that as well as provide um, some redundancy with the financial uh, aspects of the rec center. Um, so with abolishing the finance assistant, the uh, superintendent will continue to perform those duties uh, that she has for the facility for nearly 20 years. Um, we've added finance uh, responsibilities into the office administrator position uh, so that we, uh, we continue to uh, do the best we can with uh, keeping up with those. The fifth request on there is for a part-time, to approve a part-time office assistant uh, job description. We've had that position in our pay code uh, for as long as the rec center has been around, but no job description has existed. So. We don't intend to fill that immediately. That part-time position will be a uh, unclassified position, um, but it will give us the ability as memberships come back and the traffic starts to increase to have a third person to be able to assist with finance duties. Um, if we need extra assistance as well as uh, in that part-time job description, it's, uh, it's very broad. So that individual will also be able to be plugged into assisting with facility monitor duties, assisting at the front desk. Um, if, 
if that need arises. The uh, sixth request on there is we have been running our programs uh, department with one program manager. We have not had a program specialist since 2019 and our, our memberships are still down, about, about 1,000 members, but our revenue is at about 98% of where it was in 2019. And that's attributed to our programs, our rentals, um, and our day passes. So uh, we're looking to continue to ramp up our programs and prepare for the summer, uh, mainly our summer camp and our outdoor uh, programs that we've been doing in the park with rec center staff. So we're at a position where I believe we can uh, begin to advertise and fill this uh, full-time position that we've had vacant for several years now. Uh, because programs drive membership and it's our hope that by increasing those uh, we can continue to attract people to the rec center um, and uh, motivate them to come back if they haven't already so uh, lastly uh, at the bottom of the request is to change all of the direct reports under the parks and recreation department uh, to uh, myself and then all the job descriptions under the rec center uh, reporting to the superintendent uh, instead of the rec director. Um, we've put a lot of thought into this, uh, went over all the job descriptions with the staff to make sure that we weren't going to have to make additional corrections in the near future. Um, we presented this to civil service on December 7th, um, and they approved the, uh, the appointment, exceptional appointment of Christy Motes and the job descriptions. Um, I met with Mr. Huber today uh, and reviewed the job descriptions uh, as well as uh, what we're looking to do here. Um, and lastly, I wanted to add that we are going to strike the emergency clause from this. There's no need uh, for us to um, have that. Uh, they've been performing the duties for a couple of years now. Um, so another 30 days won't hurt us. Is that it? That's it, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just have one question. I mean, you have all these changes and some new job titles. Don't we have to tie the salaries to these, or don't we have to tie some kind of numbers and pay grades to these new positions, or do we? Do we what do we do with that? So there are uh, there are no new positions, if you will. Uh, there's a one new job description, and amongst all of this, and it's for a part-time uh, person, and that they're already in our pay grid. So we don't have to create anything uh, additional in regards to. So well, I mean, the first one, the director of parks, recreation, cemetery, and forestry, that's that didn't exist before. So I would have mean your pay would have to be tied to that position, wouldn't it? Would it not? No, we we just did that. We did that a, a meeting or two ago. We changed it, but did we tie the pay to this? I mean, you just, we're just creating yes. this position now, though. Well, no, we did the pay first because we wanted to implement the pay, and now we're bringing the job description that goes along with the position. Okay, does anyone remember if we matched the title, that we had the title in the... Yes. That we did? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And if, if, you, uh, if you also look at the uh, request, um, number two, it says there's an asterisk assuming dual responsibility and job description to 3107, so both the Parks and Rec Department will have my title and the Rec Center will have my title as well. Okay. And the rec center superintendent, though, we didn't do anything with that one, did we? That position was created uh, in 2020, and uh, Christy Motes was in that position with a temporary appointment, and we fixed that at civil service on okay. uh, December 7th. So that pay grade, her pay grades are Yes, it doesn't okay, change. Yes. I just didn't see that, and I don't remember. I can't remember everything. But... It's hard to keep straight. Yeah, you only had a few things on that one. Anybody have any questions on that? No. Oh, thank you, Jansen. I, I was at civil service, so I had already heard this presentation. I know you put a lot of time and effort into this and it really aligns the rec center to go forward and do well, which is what you've been doing while you've been in charge of it here. So thank you. I'll make a motion. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries 22-276, amend civil service rules, police lateral transfer. Chief? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we're requesting to amend the civil service rules to permit a uh, police lateral transfer program. This would give us the ability to take officers from other jurisdictions here in the state of Ohio that have a minimum of one year full-time experience as a certified police officer. This, was, this program was approved by civil service on December 7th. 
and we put a tremendous amount of work uh, into this project, especially Mr. Huber, who did quite a bit of research for this. And we're requesting the emergency clause as we have three open positions that we'd like to be able to use this program to help us fill those positions. Um, just to rewind a little bit, uh, essentially bringing somebody in under this program would just adjust their pay scale. We, we still would test them. Uh, the, the requirement for the competitive test still exists. Uh, once selected, they would just come in at a step that's commensurate with their full-time experience. It has no effect on vacation or seniority. Do we have to do anything with the union on this or no? No. No. I wasn't sure I, if they had a question with that or not. Yes. Well, they're welcome to come to the civil service rules. They're advertised, and if, if they want okay. to come in and say okay. anything, they, they were welcome. Not, none of them showed. But, Chief, I just have one question. Sure. I'm looking at the RCA, mm -hmm. and it's dated December 7th, but then the last sentence says on November 7th, the commission voted to approve it. Should that be December 7th also? Yes, sir. Okay. So just on the RCA, I don't know if that's important to you all, but... Uh, uh, he said December 7th, but, but the RCA said November 7th. And one more thing about the, uh, the union. There is a provision in the current contract right now that allows us to bring people in at a higher rate of pay based on their, their experience. That's essentially what this program is. So there's already a provision in the collective bargaining agreement permitting it. Questions? Yeah. Mr. Chairman? I do have one wording question in the, uh, what's it called, Rule 5, Part B, Minimum Qualifications, down under Experience in Education. You have uh, lateral transfer patrol officers must be currently employed with a minimum of one full year of peace officer experience or previously employed within the last 12 months as a full-time police officer. Um, is that how you want it? Because, like, say, if he, you know, it doesn't sound to me like the same thing. I'm putting my computer if, if or then. <laughs> because you either got to be, you got to be employed a year, or you have to be worked a year, or employed a year. Is that right? But if you're, yeah, it's okay. it's one year of experience, full time okay. experience. All right. So you want it worded that way? Okay. Thank you. And that this, this proposal was vetted by our our outside civil service council as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Just a comment before I make the motion. I want to thank the chief, the law director, the mayor, civil service, um, outside legal counsel. This was probably on civil service agenda for, it's been a while, and but everybody took it very seriously, put a lot of time and thought into coming up with this final product. So I appreciate yes. everybody's work on it. Uh, move to approve. Second. With, with the emergency clause, I'm sorry. Including the emergency clause. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. 22277 expenditure of 15,000 railroad liability insurance. Who's this one? Mr. Huber or Patrick? Or the mayor? This is definitely Pat. <laughs> <laughs> this is our annual uh, insurance for the railroad. Um, I believe it's due in June. Uh, and so this would cover that for the next, uh, the 12 months after that. Okay. Any questions? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. 22278, accept a donation for permanent parcel number 028-19-D03-124 from West Creek Conservancy. Jansen. Thank you, Mr. President. Earlier this year, uh, council passed a resolution supporting West Creek Conservancy's Clean Ohio Green Space <coughs> Conservation Program application through the state of Ohio. Um, recently, we were made aware that uh, West Creek was awarded uh, funding at their uh, grant request of $95,200 to purchase property on the corner of East Smith Road and Guilford Boulevard. It's the 10.14 acres um, that a lot of people have been asking about in the community. Um, it is under contract, and uh, they're expected to close um, in, a, in a few months. West Creek Conservancy is a nonprofit um, that has preserved a, a lot of land in the state of Ohio um, through utilizing Clean Ohio Green Space funds. And they have requested uh, that the city uh, accept the property 
um, at some point once they uh, close their grant uh, with the state. And uh, they are looking for matching funds uh, to the amount of $33,450. And the mayor and I have had conversations uh, with the uh, real estate representative from West Creek uh, and uh, the Medina County Park District uh, who uh, have assisted with the grant application um, and actually connected us with West Creek Conservancy. And uh, we're hopeful that uh, West Creek is going to put in some applications uh, to local foundations to consider uh, funding the grant match. I know they've turned in one application uh, so far. Um, in the event that those uh, avenues do not uh, come to fruition, uh, we're requesting that uh, council consider uh, the $33,450 uh, to assist with uh, closing uh, this property uh, and preserving critical floodplain. Um, the, there's almost eight acres of mature floodplain. Um, and when the Medina County Parks District did a uh, survey, um, they located um, some northern clearwater crayfish, which are a state-listed species of concern, um, and noted that uh, this area provides natural retention and filtration point for essentially all the storm water that's channeled down uh, Champion Creek uh, from the imper impervious surfaces to the west. Um, so I think uh, this is a very valuable piece of property. I know there's been some private individuals who have looked at it. Um, but I think it, it would be uh, in our, it would be in very good interest uh, for us to keep it as it is um, because it's, a, it's essentially a segment that will connect Stanbury and Maxine Nichols Park <coughs> to Roscoe Ewing Park. I know the county uh, commissioners and the uh, county park district have in interest in it because uh, they have a park just to the east of there. Um, so that's what this request is. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just wanted to uh, thank the uh, Medina County Parks system. They, they had uh, staff that were able to go in there, identify not only the uh, plant life and, and uh, uh, different trees uh, that were of interest to the state and help get our, get our grant uh, more favorably, uh, but also then just the environmental things, uh, the crayfish being one of them. But, uh, just overall, it was ranked very high uh, in the state, which resulted in the grant. And we we didn't have the staff available to do that, but the county parks loaned us uh, their experts in that. And it, in, in my mind, it really helped out. So we're looking for a donation. I think, are we checking with other foundations, as you mentioned, to... Right. Uh, Jansen reached out to the um, subject from West Creek Conservancy because there's a certain amount of paperwork and, and background documentation. A lot of what he had together already for the, the grant application to the state uh, could then be turned into um, Huntington Bank. And the plan is to run it uh, through, for consideration through the various foundations there and, and uh, do the best we can. Uh, we just need a backup. Uh, in, in case that falls through. And what is the 389 account again? I don't recall. That's not the... Unanticipated Creos. capital, I believe. Shouldn't we take it out of capital? I don't know if... I mean, is it... Do we, don't we want to take it out of regular 307 account instead of... Unanticipated, to me, feels like an emergency, like, you know, there's a, a tornado or something, and we need to okay. use it I for that. I, kn I knew we didn't have any plans to buy this. I, I saw that as unanticipated, oh, but if you mean? guys look at it differently, that's fine. What do you guys think? I, I look at unanticipated the same way that you look at unanticipated. That's right. Okay, could, we'll just change that to the 307 account. Lori, if you can make a note of that. I don't know what the rest of the numbers are, but 307 something. Um, 301. I mean 301. Yep. 307 is fine too, but I don't know. That. That's fire. <laughs> 301 account, okay, everybody with that? So with the modification, okay, is there any, <coughs> any discussion? We know it's 301. <laughs> Just make them up. No, 301, probably same account, 54411. I'll go ahead and make a motion then to accept the donation of the 10 plus acres here and to be paid out of uh, the 301 capital account. Second. 
Any further discussion, Mayor? You have the number? Right. So it's 301, and then the other uh, the num other numbers will all remain the same. So the 301 replaces the 389. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And finally, we have 22279 expenditure of 15000 for technology engineering for the IT services. Sergeant Jaremba. Thank you, Mr. President. This essentially is included in the IT budget that we discussed in the last meetings. We just, this is the formality of getting a purchase order in place. In the past, this, the MOU had covered um, TEGOH's uh, yearly expenses for IT consulting, but that will now be acquired by us with the new arrangement. So I, I took a look at the last few years based on what the schools had been um, spending, not budgeting, but spending on them and came up with the numbers that we thought we put in place. And, and that's gonna vary from year to year. It's really based on the projects we have. 2023, we, we really don't have any massive projects like we had this year where we, we did a complete server farm um, movement and an entirely new phone system. So we have some firewall and switch um, replacements coming down the line that will utilize some of their services. But I, I would anticipate that our, our budget in this realm for 2023 will be okay. Any other questions? Less. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there anything else to come before finance? This is the last finance meeting of the year, so nothing? Okay, the meeting is adjourned.